Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and in this video, I'm reviewing the Porsche Cayenne Turbo S E Hybrid Coupe. So listen up, the Cayenne played a vital part in Porsche making it through some tough times back in the day. But fast forward, and it's now in its third generation and better than ever. Going with today's trend of four-door coupe SUVs, this is Porsche's answer to that trend. The one I have today is the fastest and most powerful non-GT model Cayenne you can get. So let's see what this thing's all about in this review of the Porsche Cayenne Turbo S e-hybrid coupe. All right, so starting off the video with a humongous thank you to Porsche of downtown LA for allowing me to review this Cayenne Coupe today. So if you're interested in any Porsche, new, pre-owned, or even some off-brand pre-owned cars, they've got it. So give them a call. I've left their information in the description below. So now let's talk about the exterior design of this Cayenne Coupe. I actually like it a lot. And to be quite honest, I'm not a big fan of this whole Coupe SUV thing except for in the Cayenne. In fact, I think it's the best looking coupe SUV on the market. So much better than what the competition has to offer and it's not even close. Highlighted by the unique turbo front fascia and the acid green badging unique to this e-hybrid model and even the active aerodynamic spoiler makes this one of the coolest looking SUVs on the market today. All right, so now let's talk about what makes this the Turbo SE hybrid model, and that's the engine and the battery. So this is a four liter twin turbocharged V8 hybrid engine, making a combined output of 670 horsepower and 663 pounds-feet of torque. It has a red line of 6,800 RPM. It's mated to a eight-speed Tiptronic automatic transmission, so no PDK here, and it's putting power down to all four wheels. Now, I said a combined output of 670, and let's break that down. So the engine by itself makes 541 horsepower. The battery, 134. So you mathematicians keeping score out there are saying, hey Andy, that's a combined output of 675, not 670. Well, let me tell you why. It's because these two powertrains peak at different points. So at any given point in time, the max output is 670. Now a couple other items to the spec sheet. This car weighs 5,650 pounds, which is almost 500 pounds heavier than a regular Cayenne Turbo model. Now what do all of these specs equate to? A zero to 60 time of 3.6 seconds, which is mind bogglingly fast considering the weight of this car. Now an additional hidden benefit because this is an SUV, it has a towing capacity of 6,600 pounds. Now this is quite substantial and almost in line with a BMW X7 and a Mercedes GLS. So you can buy your Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid and tow a trailer with it. So now that we covered the engine, let's go around to the side and I'll talk to you about the battery. Now before talking about the battery specs, one interesting item about how you plug it in or where the placement of the plug-in is for this Cayenne Coupe. Generally, the manufacturers put the plug-in towards the front of the car and the gas tank is towards the back of the car. Well, Porsche has decided to go in a different direction. Both of these are on the rear of the car. The plug-in area is on the left-hand side and the gas tank is on the right-hand side. Just don't get confused when you go to the gas station. Remember, gas tank, right-hand side. Now, let's talk about the battery. Just to keep it simple, know that it was recently upgraded to a larger capacity of 17.9 kilowatts per hour. It can be charged using 240 volt or 120 volt. 
Porsche gives you a J1772 type connector with a 14.8 foot cable. Now it has a 7.2 kilowatt an hour charger on board that allows you to charge your 17.9 kilowatt per hour battery in as little as two and a half hours. Now how does all of this electrification translate to real world use cases? So you can drive this thing in all electric mode for 17 to about 20 miles depending on how heavy your right foot is and you can go up to 83 miles per hour. So for those of you who have a short commute, you don't even have to use this on gas power, just use all electric. Now. Beyond all this electric talk, this car actually has a sport exhaust system with the black tailpipes. So let's go around to the back and listen to what this thing sounds like. So what did you think of the Turbo S's exhaust note? Leave me a comment down below, but know that there's more coming on that during the driving portion of the review. Now let's talk about some of the rear end highlights and then switch gears and talk about practicality and the cargo space. So you've got two spoilers, one is fixed up here and then another one is electronically controlled. Now the car has the ability to raise and lower this based off of certain driving characteristics, but as a driver, you have the ability to do this on your own using the infotainment system as well. Then you finally got the Cayenne Turbo S insignia here in the acid green. This is exclusive to the e-hybrid models. You've also got an e-hybrid over there on the front quarter panel right by the wheels. Now, let's switch gears and talk about that practicality. So, the way you can open this trunk, there are four different methods. There's a button on the key, there's a button on the interior, there's comfort access right here on top of the license plate, and you can also use the kicking motion. So, once you open this trunk, it's electronically opening, and after several beeps, you will be greeted with 17 cubic feet of space when the seats are folded up. Now, you have the ability to fold the seats down, which will give you 50 cubic feet of space. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you are opting for the coupe versus the traditional Macan S, not the Macan, the Cayenne SUV, you're going to lose about five cubic feet of cargo space. Now, that's not to say that there isn't enough room back here in the coupe. You've actually got plenty of space. I can see you easily fitting two larger pieces of uh, traveling luggage with you. Now, one additional convenience that I love, and it's enabled because these cars have air suspension, is you have the ability to lower the rear end of the car. So the use case for this is if you've got something that's really heavy or you are a shorter individual and you don't want to lift this thing up or you have a hard time putting it in here, you can lower the rear end of the car and it will go down to as low as suspension setting so you have an easier time loading things into the back of your Cayenne. Now, it isn't all gravy for the Cayenne here. One thing that it is missing is when you fold down the rear seats, you got to do a manual. You have to go to the passenger area, pull down a strap, and then these seats fold down. Now, in other SUVs that I've driven, this is electronically controlled. And to be honest with you, I think Porsche does need to implement this in the Cayenne because considering the price, even in some of the base models. So that's basically the cargo space. Now let me take you around to the side and talk to you about the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension. All right, so the suspension, and this does have the adaptive air ride with PASM, so Porsche Active Suspension Management, and it does have the ability to raise and lower itself based off of certain driving conditions, but as a driver, you can also do it using the infotainment system. So there are four different settings, but there's also a locked fifth setting that the car and only the car itself can determine to go down to the lowest setting at excess speeds of over 131 miles per hour. So beyond that, in addition to the suspension and chassis controls, you have a Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control PDCC and separately Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus P 
PTV Plus. So a lot of acronyms, but Porsche is definitely packing in this top of the line Turbo S trim level. Now let's switch to the wheels. These are the beautiful 22 inch RS Spider wheels. They're by 10 up front and by 11 and a half in the rear. Along with that, you've got big tires, 285s up front, 315s in the rear. So a really wide wheel and tire package. Now we jump inside the wheel barrel where you see standard carbon ceramic brakes. And my goodness, these are the biggest set of brake rotors and brake calipers I have ever seen in any car. So these are 17.3 inch brake rotors being bitten onto by an acid green, again, Porsche exclusive, 10 piston caliper up front in the rear 16.1 inch brake rotor being bitten onto by a four piston again acid green brake caliper in the back so if you don't like the acid green color here you can also paint these in black the calipers that is but my goodness guys these things are absolutely humongous and there's just a sight to see if you've never seen them before so now that's it for the suspension and wheels, tires, brakes. Let's jump onto the inside and I'll tell you what it's like in there. All right, so now the interior of the Cayenne Turbo S. And I gotta say guys, this is a really nice place to be. Very simple, very clean, a lot of conveniency built in that I'll talk about here in a second related to the infotainment screen. It's very comfortable and ergonomically pleasant to sit in this car. So now let me jump into the details. So this seat, you get a standard 18-way seat. If you don't like the 18-way seat for whatever reason, you can get the 14-way. But I can't see any reason why anyone wouldn't be able to get comfortable in this thing because the cushioning is good. You have infinite levels of adjustability beyond just the normal forward, backwards, and the backwards. The bolstering expands, the thigh support expands. You do have a thigh extension as well. Um, and all of this is controlled using buttons, nothing on the infotainment screen. I saw this in the Lexus LC500 and I didn't like it at all. I want physical buttons and Porsche is doing that. So that's the seat. Now let me move to the steering wheel. And this is the common Porsche steering wheel that you see. It's very nice with the aluminum pieces and the all leather, but it does have something interesting on the drive mode selector. And there's different letters. There's an E for electric, H for hybrid, S and S plus for sport and sport plus. Now let me talk to you about the driving modes or the hybrid modes in this car. So you've got e-power, which is basically the car running on all electric. Then you've got hybrid, which is a variable between the electric and the gas powered engine. Then you've got e-hold, which holds the battery charge available in the battery, doesn't use the battery at all. Then you've got e-charge, which uh, charges the battery using the gas powered car. And then sport and sport plus uses the engine and the battery at the same time. So, so if you're keeping track there, the three modes where you use the battery are e-power, where it's just the battery alone, Sport and Sport Plus, where it's a combination of the engine and the battery. All right, so now coming over to this side and let's talk about the infotainment system and this center control section. So the infotainment system, physical characteristics, 12.3 inches. It is a touch screen, really nice screen to look at. Then you come down here and these are all shortcut keys, all touch capacitive, all really nice looking, clear and easy to read. So now let's get into the software and some of the intuitive, convenient things that Porsche is doing for you related to the infotainment system and down here. So the infotainment system is actually really good. I've seen this in the 911 and I like it there. I also like it here. It's similar to uh, the characteristic I like to describe the BMW iDrive system in and, and I like that system a lot as well is it's very in depth. There's a lot of deep menus. There's a lot of customization you can do but Porsche kind of sums it up for you and gives you these widget style layouts or widget style buttons that give you information right at the, at the tip of your fingertips, which you can also configure. You can choose what your widgets display and that is the additional layer of conveniency that's built into the infotainment system. Otherwise, if you're tech savvy and you sit down here and you kind of get used to it, it's very easy to navigate through. There's a lot of menus, shortcut keys here on the left. And overall, it's a very 
pleasing and enjoyable experience using this infotainment system. Now, when you come down here in the center control section, one of my favorite things that Porsche has done is put shortcut keys to all of the major things that you would use in the infotainment system so you don't have to go digging around. This isn't that additional layer of conveniency I was talking about. So you've got buttons laid out here at the top, source, media, home, some of the big ones, hybrid controls, uh, off-roading, phone, naps, and this is very clever. I actually like it a lot. So that's it for the front. Now let's jump to the back and I'll show you what it's like for the rear passengers. All right, so now the rear seats and let's jump right into it. So as far as the comfort level, it's very comfortable back here. The seats are cushioned really well. My seating position is good and uh, I'm 5'10", 5'11". My leg room is immense. I'm sitting behind myself comfortably. My headroom is very nice. Uh, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't see anybody who's taller than I am, 6'1", 6'2", having issues sitting back here even with this sloped slanted roof in the coupe version of the Cayenne. Now some of the conveniences I have here of course I've got a armrest with two cup holders and then I have individual climate zones so this is a four zone climate control system in this Cayenne. I've got heated seats back here. I can control my own corner of the car as I please. In addition to that, I've got two USB type C charging ports and a traditional 12 volt outlet. Now, one quick item before moving to the next topic, and it's related to the seating configuration. Now, generally, when you talk about these four door coupes, that usually means two seats up front, two seats in the rear and the center section to put your stuff. But Porsche is giving you the option, if you wanna buy your four door coupe, you can option in the two plus two or you can get the bench style seat like this one. So you can have a max capacity of five individuals in your four door coupe, which is fantastic. And finally, I've got a glass roof to look outside of. This is uh, a great feature, not only to make the interior feel a little roomier, but as a passenger, when you're sitting back here, it's just a cool thing to see the sky when you're driving around or the stars when you're driving at night. So that's basically it on the interior. Seriously, guys, this is one of the nicest interiors I've been in in a Porsche product uh, or even compared to some other products the leather is super soft uh, very comfortable seating position seats 18 way the infotainment system the way the buttons are laid out this is something I would desire to own it's a really really nice interior and a comfortable place to be now with all that said Let's go to the driving portion of the review and see what this thing feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review and as always the Porsche key, nothing really fancy here. It's got a nice look to it, nice way to it, but ding it for uh, being plastic only and need me some metal on this thing. $200,000 car, come on. All right, so now uh, the overall visibility is fantastic. You still get that fishbowl feel out of the Cayenne as well. So the visibility out front is great. Out the back, I do have blind spot monitoring. The camera is a 360 degree camera. I have front and rear parking sensors, lane keep assist. All of these things are coming in as standard. This car does have a few additional items as I showed you uh, the window sticker earlier on. But that's pretty much it. The price of the Cayenne Turbo S E hybrid is about $165,000 before all the options and whatnot. This one is $194,000, so roughly $30,000 in options. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and put our seatbelt on and see what this Cayenne Turbo S E hybrid is all about. Let's go ahead and set off. So the car is actually on. Now it's on but it turns on in electric only. So let me give you a feel of this in electric. It feels funny to be driving uh, in an all electric mode, knowing that you have 670 horsepower on tap. Well, 541 if you take the battery out, but uh, this is just like you would uh, experience in any other electric car. Nothing really different about it, to be honest with you, it feels just like a Tesla or uh, any other electric car that you get into by 2022 standards. So now beyond that, while I wait for this traffic to clear because I wanna go in that direction, less traffic this way than that way. And uh, 
Uh, let's start off with the suspension. So when I, uh, the suspension is actually rather stiff. Uh, it's not the most comfortable riding car. And to be honest, I'm glad that that's not, I'm glad that that's the case because this is the highest performing trim level in the uh, Cayenne lineup. So it should be a stiff riding car. Uh, but that's not to say it's too stiff. Uh, that stiffness is counterbalanced by the comfortableness, if that's even a word, the comfortableness or the comfort level of the 18 the way seat. So the seat is so comfortable that it gives you uh, that level of luxury that you're expecting when you're paying something like this. But the suspension, what I feel uh, down low in the car uh, from the wheels and from the feedback, I do feel that this is a stiffer riding car than I certainly expected. The steering is also pretty good as well. I had a chance to drive it around really quickly and I'm not going to put a lot of miles on this or I didn't get a chance to thrash on it or anything because I'm in the city and this is a dealer car. So anyways, uh, the steering is actually good. It's, it's the same as what you would expect in, in Porsche cars. The electric uh, steering rack in Porsche cars are fantastic and it's no different here in the Cayenne Turbo S. So now let's uh, wait for this red light and I'm fe I feel like I've just been waiting around and uh, I've been in e-charge mode so I can charge up my uh, electric battery a little bit as I run using the gas only. So now let me get around and let's do a quick pull using just the gas and then we'll do one using the gas and the electric. All right, so gas only. Very, very fast. Ridiculously fast car. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do wish the brake, there was a little bit more brake in this car. Uh, I really have to push down on the pedal to give me the power that I need. It's not to say that it's under brake, it's just I wish there was a little bit more sensitivity at the top of the pedal, much like I get in the 911 or most other sports cars. So now, my battery, I've been running in e-charge mode, which is limiting me to only the gas power. Remember I mentioned that there's a couple modes, the e-charge, the e-hold, which holds the battery charge. Uh, it doesn't use it whatsoever, it doesn't charge it, it doesn't deplete it. So uh, now let's go into hybrid, hybrid auto and the transition between all electric and gas and gas and all electric and the hybrid setup is completely seamless. Porsche does a fantastic job in tuning this thing uh, so that you don't feel the transition between the two mo or the several different modes that you have, or at least from what I noticed. And now it's in, uh, so, see now when I'm in hybrid auto, it takes off an electric and then when I give it a little bit more gas, it just turns the engine on as well. All right, so now let's get it in Sport Plus and let's see if we can get a quick pull on with both modes enabled. All right, so straight road. I'm gonna come to a quick stop and let's go. Oh, wow. The difference is staggering. Wow. The difference with both powertrains is staggering. Jeez. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. Give me a little bit more break. Now that I drive it with this, uh, with both modes, uh, the, the more break comes into play here. Give me a little bit more braking here. Uh, of course, this is a big, heavy car, so those carbon ceramics are really working. But let's see. Oh my goodness, this is unbelievably fast. All right, one last time. Ooh, wow. The difference is staggering. This is such a fast car. And the exhaust note is really nice. The barks that you get from the exhaust are great. So from a speed standpoint, no questions. This thing is really, really fast. 
no, so now I'm back in hybrid auto mode, uh, which is what most people are probably going to drive this thing in. And it's a totally tame car. Like I said, you have to balance the stiff suspension and kind of recalibrate your expectation with the Turbo S setup because this is the top of the line trim and it's supposed to be a sports SUV. So you are getting somewhat of a stiff ride. And then my thoughts on the interior, uh, I told you earlier, it's a fantastic interior. I like it a lot. It's very nicely laid out, very clean, very easy to use. I like the shortcut keys. And then the rear seats are also good, storage is good. So, I mean, this is a fantastic car. Now, one of the questions about this car is the price. So $194,000 or even the $164,000 price. On its own merits, as a car by itself, don't compare it to any other cars in the price range. This is an absolutely, unbelievably good car. Now, when you compare it to something else, maybe the Audi, maybe you're looking at an Urus, maybe some other fast SUV, uh, it just becomes a matter of preference there. So do you want a Porsche or do you want a Lamborghini? And this is in the price range where people buying this car are uh, really looking for that brand image compared to, hey, what else can I get? What more can I get for my money? So those are pretty much my thoughts. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.